Good morning. Just one thing before we begin. Um, David is on vacation, so we have Trevor playing for us today, which means that things that we would normally sing will be spoken, including the Gloria and the Sanctus. So if you want to follow along in the BCP, we start on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Psalm, Psalm 19, as printed in the bulletin, we will read it responsively by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. In the deep 
has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of its chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not to have a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the son of the vineyard comes, or now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The gospel passage today sometimes can seem weird, and it does have multiple interpretations. And in our lectionary, we actually have two tracks of the Old Testament. We follow the one that goes more or less in sequential order, but there is a second track. And in that one, this reading is paired with a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's something that we find in the fifth chapter. And there are some similarities between what we heard today and what was in Isaiah. There is a watchtower, there's a wine press, there's a wall, there's a vineyard. And people hearing Jesus tell this parable for the first time may have made that connection with the passage from Isaiah. But Jesus' story changes with the introduction of the tenants, the landowner, the landowner's servants, and the landowner's son. And with them as characters, the story is often interpreted as the vineyard being God's people. The tenants are the religious authorities. The servants who go first to the vineyard are prophets. The son is Jesus, and the landowner is God. And so that becomes a very neat and tidy way of interpreting this parable, one that places the responsibility for managing the vineyard on the tenants, or that is, on the religious authorities of that time. And it does seem that the uh, authorities who are hearing this gospel or hearing this parable heard it in that particular way as they became very angry with Jesus. And it also fits with what is to come later on in the gospel, that Jesus is killed by those who are in power, who rejected his message and the message of the prophets who came before him. So that's one way of looking at it. There are some things that I wonder about, though, like why would the tenants have assumed that they would inherit the vineyard if they killed the owner's son. That's generally not how things work, then or even now. And surely the retribution of the owner would have been swift and sure, and things would not have ended well for those tenants. And maybe Matthew, in the way that he writes this parable, was trying to make a point about the unreasonableness of the people who opposed the early Christian communities, especially since the ones he was likely writing for were Christians who had been tossed out of the synagogues. So therefore, Jesus needs to be on their side, and the kingdom needs to be theirs and not belong to their enemies. Another way I've heard this uh, parable interpreted is that the vineyard is the good news, that the followers of Jesus are the tenants, 
and the landowner, servants and son are symbols of oppression and those who would take the good news away from the people who follow Jesus. And there's some value at looking at it in that way. And certainly at that time, absentee landlords were the norm, and they really did not care for the well-being of their tenants. They were much more concerned with getting their rent, usually the majority share of the crop. So therefore, it is on the tenants to hold very tightly to the good news, to the gospel, and to prevent those who would take it away from them from doing so. Because it is they, and not the landowner, who are the ones actually tending to the vines so that they produce good fruit. So these are, are two fairly common interpretations, at least from what I have heard. And while the ones, and they, and again, while these are the ones I've heard most often, they're also probably not the only ways to take a look at this story. Parables yield different interpretations, and that is the nature of a parable. I think it's also good to put ourselves into these stories every once in a while. And in this particular one, I think that there is a tendency for us to see ourselves as the vines in the vineyard, waiting to be harvested and needing to be protected. But I think that maybe there is some value in seeing ourselves as the tenants. Because we certainly can be like the tenants. We can seize this vineyard for ourselves, and we will even do it in the name of Jesus. If we think of how we are cultivating the vineyard, which could be the church at large or the church right here, how are we doing it? Do we treat it as our garden, that we are keeping in a way that makes us feel comfortable, that we tend in a way just to serve ourselves? And so who are the fruits of our labor intended for? I think that goes back to the question of fruits in today's gospel. So why bother with ever growing fruit? Again, is it for our own benefit? Or is it to do the work of the kingdom? If the tenants are tending the vineyard to produce grapes just for themselves, then it is no wonder that they don't want to deal with the owner's servants, let alone the owner's son. The tenants say that they know what is best, and they will tell the owner what is best. And their vision is limited to themselves right now. I don't know if any of you grow grapes, but I do know that some of you have apple trees and other fruit-bearing trees. So if you do grow anything like that, or any crop that requires years of careful attention, the work of tending those vines or those trees is always done with an eye to the future. Because if not, then that vineyard or the orchard will stop producing any fruit that's worth anything. It will decline, eventually it will be abandoned and perhaps even chopped down. So whether there will still be a vineyard in the future depends in no small part on how it is tended right now. So if we see ourselves as the, as the tenants, then the vineyard, we have to remember, is not for ourselves and for our own use in this very moment. The work that we do here is for the future. It's for the people who will come after us, the babies who will be baptized here, the new people who walk through our doors. The work is for the kingdom, and it is not for our own use. The warning that is in the gospel is for us now just as much as it was for the people who heard it first. The kingdom of God is for those who produce fruit. If not, then it will be taken from them, maybe all at once, maybe in small increments over a long time. And when we think about it, that's, at least for me, not a particularly easy or comforting message to hear. But it does serve to remind us of something that we need to be reminded of from time to time. And that is, we need to keep in mind who is the owner of this vineyard. Amen. Please stand. And let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will begin with the Trilogue Prayer. Please join me if you are able. Lord, it is your voice that calls each of us to play our part in the story of your church in Wisconsin. For you have made us for your purpose of revealing love in a challenging time and a divided world. As our three dioceses discern becoming one, continuing to seek your will for us, enlighten our hearts to know what things we ought to do, Enlighten our minds to know what things we need to leave behind. Enlighten our spirits to embrace a future none but you know. Give us peace, give us courage, give us hope, and give us perseverance to make the steps necessary to continue to follow your lead. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, especially our parish families, Gibran and Santa, Father Patrick and Myra, Father Peter and Lily, Yacoub and Sarah, Joe and Lois, and Judith. And we pray for those celebrating birthdays, especially Elena, Mike, Joe, Lee, and the anniversaries of Rich and Karen, and Kurt and Lori that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop provisional, Mike, our rector, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for healing and comfort, especially for Carol and John, Amy, Anne, Anne, Barbara, Bill, Burley, Colum, Chip, Cole, Dick, Ed, Jen, Joe, Julie, Ken, Marion, Mary, Mariah, Phyllis, Tim, Tim, and Vivian. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I think we have an announcement from Lee. The youth like visual aids. So today is the last day of our coat drive and we made it halfway to our goal and granted it was a very big goal that the, uh, that the teens had to collect 50 coats, so we made it halfway, we made 25, um, which was very impressive. Our teens are working very hard to live out their confirmation vows, right, to treat every human with dignity and respect. And part of that is that when they see their shivering fellow students that can't afford to have coats, they wanted to make certain that they had the clothing that they need. Um, and so these coats up here on the altar represent the ones that will be going to the Salvation Army tomorrow to help clothe those in need in our community. And then next Sunday, we will begin collecting boxes of macaroni and cheese to help feed our neighbors in the kingdom. And that will go uh, through the middle of November, and those will become part of Christmas baskets that the Salvation Army has a goal of creating 500 uh, Christmas baskets this year for families, working families that are in need. And then I have to change my scripts here. Post-it sticky paper is tough. So today we talked about love and looking at the Ten Commandments through the lens of love. And so I hope nobody is offended that we slightly rewrote the Ten Commandments. Hopefully God gives approval here. And instead of thou shalt not, we started with thou shall. Thou shall love God above all things. Thou shall believe in one God. Thou shall use the name of God with love. Thou shall divide devoutly observe Sunday. Honor those who care for you. Be a peaceful human. Love your spouse and honor your relationships. Honor your neighbor's property. You shall tell the truth. And finally, be content with what you have. So on behalf of all of our uh, children and Sunday school staff, we just wanted to share with you. So thank you. Thank you, Lee. Just a reminder that the pictures for the parish directory, photo directory, are going to be this last, last weekend of this month. So there are still flyers. Um, if you haven't picked one up, if you haven't signed up, please do so. Um, it's the first time we've done one in, well, since at least 2014. Also at the back of church, um, I think they were passed out last week, but feel free to take another one. Uh, Jake has put together a list of appropriate items for the little free pantry that's out in front. So if you are looking to make donations for that, um, it has some suggestions. And also Molly a couple of weeks ago was talking about um, how we were asked for a collections of cheddar cheese goldfish, if you happen to have them lying around. Um, it is for the a daughter, uh, uh, like she's what, not, is she two, Molly? How old is she? Th okay, so her co-worker's three-year-old granddaughter who 
is undergoing treatment for cancer and cheddar cheese goldfish are pretty much the only things that she will eat right now. So if you have them lying around your house, So please keep her in your prayers. Uh, birthdays or anniversaries this week? Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Lee as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, as Lee mentioned, we have the, the coats up here, so we are just going to say a blessing over them because after today, they are going to be going over to Salvation Army to be distributed. So let us pray. O oh God, we give thanks to you for the generosity of the people who have donated these jackets. We ask that you bless them, that you bless all those who wear them, that you bless those who have donated them. May these jackets be a sign of your love, the sign of, of the love that people in this community have for those who are going without. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy. Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.